Tonight, first with the nation's news, comet collapse, fears for jobs as another high street giant shuts up shop. Hospital alert, the first case of a new strain of superbug is detected in Scotland. In sport, will he stay or will he go? The SFA board holds talks over Levine's future. And high hopes, the Edinburgh gospel singer hoping to make it at the Mobos. Good evening, I'm John Mackay. This is the STV News at 6, live from Glasgow. Hundreds of Scottish jobs are under threat this evening after it was confirmed that the electrical chain Comet will go into administration. Comet will be run as a going concern while administrators examine options for sales, closures and liquidation. The company's demise represents one of the biggest failures on the high street in recent years. Comet employs 6,500 people across the UK. Here's our business correspondent, Gerald Paul. It's another body blow to Scotland's hard-pressed high street. Electrical giant Comet will be put into administration next week. It's the latest in a series of big-name failures. Comet was bought for a nominal £2 by an investment firm earlier this year, but it has been unable to halt the downward slide. The news leaves 700 jobs in Scotland under threat. What this underlines are the challenges that still face the economy across the length and breadth of Scotland and the rest of the UK. Our number one focus is on getting the the economy back on a sustainable path. These are really tough times, but sorting out the economy, putting it on a firm footing, has got to remain our top priority. Comet's downfall is one of the largest retail failures since Woolworths collapsed in 2008. It comes just a month after JJB Sports went into administration. Clinton Cards, Black's Leisure and Peacock's have also been lost to the high street. I think there's been diversification in the, the routes to market that's had a, an impact on the high street and retail. Um, certainly online purchase is so easy these days and equally you find that the, the supermarkets and others are selling a wider range of, of product. It's a sad demise for a business which had humble beginnings as a two-man enterprise charging batteries in 1933. I'm surprised but I'm really sad but I think there's various factors isn't there, competition, people haven't got the money. I feel sorry for all the people that's got to be put out of work, you know, it's just shocking. I wouldn't say I was surprised, no, I've, I've shopped online myself, like, and uh, to be fair, I didn't, I didn't really go to Comet as such. Restructuring specialist Deloitte will be appointed as administrator. Their focus will be on trying to secure buyers for the company's 240 stores. Well, we can join our business correspondent, Cheryl Paul. Cheryl, what's likely to happen in the short term? Well, I think the very first thing that will happen is when administrators move in on Monday. Very much the focus will be on finding a buyer for their massive business and for stores like this one. But Comet tell us tonight they are operating as normal. It's business as usual and staff are working normally. Of course, consumers need to know where they stand. And if you've got a gift card or a voucher or if you've ordered goods and paid for them, Comet say they will honour that. But consumer experts say it's important that you act quickly and actually act before the store goes into administration on Monday now. Of course, this story is a tragedy for the Scottish economy and for those facing losing their jobs, but it could prompt a pre-Christmas bonanza on the shopping front. I think the administrators will, of course, want to sell off those goods and get as much money in the coffers for creditors as possible, and that will mean bargains. So I suppose a glimmer on what's a pretty dark horizon tonight for Comet. Back to you. Cheryl in Aberdeen, thank you. The first case of a new strain of the hospital bug C. difficile has been detected in Scotland. The strain has previously been responsible for a number of deaths in Australia, with only a handful of cases in Europe so far. Hospitals and health boards around Scotland have been alerted. Our chief reporter, David Cowan, has more. The new strain of the so-called superbug, Clostridium difficile, has been connected to a series of infections in Australia. The Scottish case is one of the first in Europe. A patient was being transferred between two hospitals when they fell ill. They've recovered and will be allowed home soon. The strain is a variation of the bug which killed 18 patients at the Vale of Leven Hospital more than four years ago. Measures to prevent the spread of bugs like C. difficile are now a common sight in hospitals across Scotland. And nationally, the infection rate is coming down. But the arrival of a new strain from the other side of the world is causing concern. 
It's not clear how the infection reached Northern Europe. The government agency Health Protection Scotland has warned hospitals and health boards to be on the alert. This is a routine report on a new strain that has emerged in, in Scotland. Um, there's no evidence that this strain is any more harmful than any other strains. So we're continuing uh, using the same measures for prevention and control. Certainly what's been put in, in, into practice over the last few years is paying dividends in the sense that the number of hospital associated cases is falling and falling really on a, on a, on a regular basis um, over the piece. So clearly the hospitals have got to grips with this, but of course that doesn't really say the problem's gone away. The problem hasn't gone away. And of course this new strain appearing shows basically it hasn't, it's still a challenge. A public inquiry into the Vale of Leaven outbreak began three years ago and has entered its closing stages. The emergence of the new strain is a reminder of the bug's existence and the need for vigilance. David Cowan, STV News. MSPs have been debating plans to cut the drink drive limit. The Scottish Government wants to reduce the amount of alcohol motorists are allowed from 80 milligrams per 100 millilitres of blood to 50 milligrams. Road safety campaigners say they back the change but are ultimately aiming for a zero limit. Although any level of alcohol can impair driving and people can react differently to alcohol, evidence shows that it's around 50 milligrams per 100 millilitres when impairment in driving manifests itself through a much increased likelihood of being involved in accidents. I, like the Minister, believe that this is a scourge in this country. In fact, I am of a generation that comfortably believes that it is wholly unacceptable to consume any alcohol if you have the intention of driving. Here's Raman with a look ahead to the sport. Thanks a lot, John. Coming up tonight, uh, the SFA board holds talks over that man's future there. Craig Levine, will they back him or sack him? We're live at Hamden with the very latest. Also tonight, action from last night's games after Rangers crash out of the Cup. We feature Aloha ahead of their trip to Ibrox. And in tennis, Andy Murray's out of the Paris Masters. Action from that game also on the way in the sports desk a bit later on. John. See you then, Roman. Thanks. A Scottish teenager suffering a rare debilitating genetic condition says she's determined to pursue her career in fashion. Louise Wedderburn has a genetic disease which causes each of her joints to lock as muscle turns into bone. Her story is told in a documentary tonight. Sean Donaldson reports. Louise Wedderburn on location in London. The Fraserburgh teenager has already secured work experience at both London Fashion Week and Elle magazine. Everybody kind of thinks that fashion is kind of like devil's wear Prada, but everybody was so lovely to me. They never made like one bit of difference. They were just like, they never, they never made like a difference because of my FOP. I was more interested in my clothes and my knowledge. But behind the scenes, Louise knows she could be frozen upright in a matter of years. The 19-year-old is battling fibrodysplasia, or FOP, which causes soft tissue to turn into bone, locking her body permanently into place. Only 700 cases have been recorded worldwide. The average life expectancy is 41. To date, there's no known cure. It's about three to five years away, I think, but it takes 120,000 a year. It does take quite a lot of money, but when they find the cure, it helps so much other um, conditions. STV cameras filmed Louise when she was just 12 years old. Her condition meant she had to be largely schooled at home. Any bump to her body could block another joint. Now her story is being told nationally, captured in a documentary, The Human Mannequin, to be aired tonight. She picks it up really quickly and it's always nice when someone's very enthusiastic because they are more willing to get stuck in straight away, which is great for us. It is a ton of hard work. It's not even put me off idea I wanted to be in the fashion world. I would work as hard as it takes to get there. Louise says she's determined to follow her dream to become a stylist or a makeup artist and will never let the illness affect her passion for fashion. Sharon Donaldson, STV News. Now, if we look at other stories across Scotland. A man has been arrested in connection with a serious sexual assault on a woman in Aberdeen. The 22 year old was attacked in the Powys area of the city on Saturday morning, sparking one of Grampian Police's largest investigations involving 130 officers. The Student Awards Agency for Scotland have extended their helpline hours after thousands of students were left without loans and bursaries. 
The helpline will now open from 8 in the morning and over the weekend following a massive backlog. The First Minister and Scottish Labour leader have again clashed on Scottish independence during First Minister's questions. Today's exchanges were the most personal yet, with Joanne Lamont quoting an American newspaper to assert that Alex Salmond could not be trusted. In reply, he accused her of dealing in personal insult. The Washington Post, the newspaper that exposed Richard Nixon's corruption, knows a chancer when it sees one. And it makes a serious charge. Mr Salmond's cheerful assurances that Scotland could quickly join the European Union while retaining the British pound as its currency remain to be tested. So I came across a, a, an article, uh, actually an interview she did with The Guardian just, uh, just a year ago when she talked about her great frustration. Her great frustration. I'm more frustrated by the politics where you play the man and not the politics. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne Lamont has managed to call me stupid, wee eck, a sucker, devious and a corkscrew. I think after that, comparing with the interview, no wonder nobody believes a word she says. Scotland's three largest airports are joining calls for an urgent review of air passenger duty by the UK government. A new report says the charge could cost Scotland two million passengers a year by 2016 and far more in lost spending. Bosses at all three hubs say the levy is making them uncompetitive and damaging the economy. Jennifer Harold reports. Edinburgh Airport recently added Turkish Airlines to their service. But bosses at all three of Scotland's major airports say new links like this are under threat. With some of the highest air passenger duty charges in Europe, they fear losing out to cheaper alternatives abroad. If you're an airline looking at where to base your next aircraft and uh, there's a huge difference in pricing here compared to say France or even Ireland where we're very directly competing, then they're just going to put their aircraft elsewhere and that means we'll have less routes, less jobs, less opportunity for people to come to Scotland and effectively just be damaging an economy for no good return. It's passengers and long-haul flights that have been hit the hardest. A family of four travelling to America six years ago would have paid £80 in air passenger duty. Today, they would pay £324. By reducing Scottish Airport's ability to be competitive, the concern now is that air passenger duty is affecting Scotland's ability to pull itself out of recession. According to the report, the high charge could cost the Scottish economy as much as £210 million in lost tourist spending by 2016. This Edinburgh travel agent says he's already losing out. It does have a damage in as much as our customers are not getting the opportunity that they want to travel, therefore we are not getting that business. One cannot measure that at this stage, but if we were to remove the tax for a short period of time, it might be a good opportunity to show the government what the situation is. The UK Treasury say last year's freeze on air passenger duty means recent increases only added a pound to ticket prices. The fear tonight is that there may be worse to come. Jennifer Harold, STV News. A Scottish farm will supply this year's Christmas tree for Downing Street. Garricher Tree Farm near Creetown in Dumfries and Galloway was given the honour after winning the Champion Christmas Tree Award. The farm will deliver a 16 and a half foot tree to stand outside number 10 from the end of November. We came into the industry 12 years ago. We've been working hard to try and uh, improve the quality of our products here. Uh, what's really nice for us is if somebody walks into a house and looks at one of our trees and goes, wow. Um, so if they look at them at the competition and went, wow, and voted for us and it's vindication of years of work. Still to come, the student hoping to make his mark at this year's Mobo Awards. Sean will also be here with your weather forecast. Well, we've got lots of heavy showers rattling in across western parts at the moment. Thundery in places, some hail, but also something wintry again up over the higher ground. But lots of showers as we go into this evening, and potentially windy in places as well. Join me later for all the details. But first, here's Raman with all the sports across Scotland today. Scottish Lila Whiskey sponsors STV Sports News. Good evening. A decision on Craig Levine's future as Scotland manager could be announced this evening. We're live now to Keith Downey, who's at the National Stadium. So, Keith, uh, what's the very latest? 
Well, Raman, after a dismal start to the qualifying campaign, a seven-man board were due to meet today to discuss the future of Craig Levine. What we can tell you is that not the whole board met. We know of one board member who's actually on holiday, and we understand that some of these talks actually took place over conference call. Now, as it stands, no decision has been made on the future of our national manager. And we understand that the cost aspect is one talking point. Craig Levine still has 20 months left his five-year deal as Scotland manager and it would cost up to £700,000 to release him from that contract. But speaking last night before the Dundee United against Hearts League Cup match, Levine was quite confident of staying in his post. Well, firstly, I'm uh, hugely proud to be the manager of Scotland and I want to continue to do the job. Uh, I had a chat with um, Stuart and Campbell earlier in the week and uh, I believe I will find out one way or another um, so at the beginning of the next week. Well, that was Craig Levine last night. And one man who is in the frame for the job, should Levine go, was speaking to the media today. He feels that no change should be made, particularly while we're in the middle of a qualifying campaign. Uh, well, from a Scotland support, uh, I think it's, it is a very difficult one for them. Um, for uh, the board because they're looking at it and they're looking at it in a way where the results from their point of view and also from the manager's point of view aren't what they expected um, but it's the middle of a campaign and I think that's a, the delicate thing about it. It is a big decision today and uh, I hope it's right for Scottish football but I think they should listen to what the manager has got to say. So as it stands, no final decision on the future of Levine. We don't actually have any international matches in the group until next March, but there is a friendly in less than two weeks' time against Luxembourg, and it's worth noting that Levine or whoever is in charge will have to name their squad for that match on Monday. So the clock is ticking. Back to you. It certainly is, Keith. Keith, on your live from hand, and thanks very much for that. And we will, of course, post any developments on the story on our website, stv.tv forward slash sport. Now, Ali McCoist admits Rangers have a long way to go to be back at the top level. The Irish boss was speaking after watching his team lose comprehensively to Inverness Cali Thistle in the quarterfinals of the League Cup last night with action from the game at Ibrox and Hearts' triumph over Dundee United. Here's Caroline Henderson. Despite Rangers' third division status, Terry Butcher insisted his men were the underdogs before their trip to Ibrox last night. That certainly didn't appear to be the case after kickoff. 28,000 watched on as Inverness ruthlessly dumped Rangers out of the League Cup. Following Andrew Shinney's first half opener, Inverness doubled their advantage after the break through Gary Warren, before Graham Shinney netted from the spot to complete a comfortable victory for the Highlanders. It took two goals, 120 minutes of playing time and 14 penalty attempts for Hearts to move one step closer to League Cup glory. Callum Patterson fired the visitors ahead on 20 minutes, but Johnny Russell's equaliser levelled the scoring at the break. With 12 minutes left on the clock, Darren Barr was given his marching orders for a second offence, but United failed to capitalise on a numerical advantage. All square at 90 minutes, the game went to extra time and a chance for a familiar face to make his home debut for his new club. John Rankin came closest to sending United through, but he was denied by the woodwork. With the game at sudden death, both sides were level after five penalties. Hearts captain Marius Salyukas converted number 13 before Sean Dillon's miss sent Hearts through to the semi-finals. Caroline Henderson, STV News. Well, from the League Cup to the Scottish Cup and Alloa are set to land a cash windfall of around £100,000 from their Scottish Cup tie against Rangers. Paul Hartley takes his emerging side to Ibrox on Saturday and, as I found out, the Wasps are also making significant strides off the park. At Recreation Park, they play in front of an average crowd of 500 every second Saturday. But come this weekend, the Alloa squad may well be in an arena upwards of 30,000 people when they travel to Ibrox for a Scottish Cup tie. Aiming to write his name in the history books is Alloa boss Paul Hartley. Well, someone will be the biggest game of their careers. For myself, management will be my biggest game in my career so far. We don't want the game to pass them by. We want them to go there and express ourselves show that they're a good team and, and don't have any regrets on the day. We've realised that you need to be more than that. you know. For chairman Mike Mulraney, Alloa is more than a football club. Adjacent to the stadium is the Wasps Community Club, creating new facilities for other sports such as gymnastics, judo, as well as football. 
A football club can be probably successful without this, but to be a true community club, you've got to embrace every opportunity, every sport, and all of your community if you at all can. And that's what we're really trying to achieve here. We're trying to have an opportunity where if there is any avenue that we can help our community access sport and leisure, mm -hmm. that's what we're going to do. We want to try and encourage the younger uh, generation to come and support the, the local football club. We are a community club. Um, I think we've got 300 kids in the, the community was for the, for the young footballers, so, which is encouraging. As well as hoping to mastermind a cup shock on Saturday, Hartley is targeting promotion for the second year in a row. Well, you can see we're just finishing this corner right now. Off the park, the cash windfall from the Rangers game will help fund the creation of a new stand at Recreation Park. The Rangers game is going to afford us opportunity to put the down payment down, the, the, the first building block in place to do our last end. The fourth quarter harks back over 100 years mm -hmm. and, and it, it, it's something that we've, we've been developing a long term plan for. In the short term, it's all systems go for the Rangers match. They were just sending it to the referee to let them know what colours we're wearing on Saturday. On the last visit to Ibrox in 1998, Alloa were defeated 4-0. In fact, they've never beaten Rangers. However, Paul Hartley is aiming to change that on Saturday and have the last laugh. Tennis and Andy Murray has crashed out of the Paris Masters in the third round. Despite going is set up against Jerzy Janovic, the Scot lost his way in the match, losing the next two sets to the big serving pole. Golf and Paul Ori has made an impressive start at the World Golf Championship in China. He carded a three under par 69 in his opening round at Mission Hills. That leaves him just four shots behind joint leaders Adam Scott and Louis Oosterhuizen. Yeah, it was a good day's work because I kind of struggled a wee bit out there. Didn't play very well. Uh, didn't hit the ball as well as you would like. But, you know, it's nothing to do with that. You know, it's about getting the ball in the hole. And uh, overall, I think three under the way I've played, it's a good effort today. There's birdies to be made out there, you know, like any golf course. But if you hit it offline, you know, it's pretty tough to get it round. So I'm not sure how scoring is going to be overall because I've not played here before. We've not had a stroke. Scottish there. Leader Whiskey sponsors STB Sports News. Oh, get a taste of that. Offside. That's all I spoke for me tonight. I'm back tomorrow. John. Robert, thanks. Tonight's main news headline, hundreds of Scottish jobs under threat as the electrical chain Comet heads for administration. Here's Sean with your weather. Thank goodness it's lovely and warm in here. Yeah, it's really nice. Oh. <laughs> well, I am working my socks off. <laughs> A very good evening to you. Well, the air pressure at the moment is very low. If you've got a wee barometer at home, give it a knock and you'll notice probably the needle dropping down to around 970 millibars. Very low. That's all down to a deep area of low pressure out to the west of us at the moment, which has been producing some hefty showers in places. More of that to come this evening. Now, just have a look back quickly at some of the stats from October. You can see the dullest place to be. Aviemore was 60 hours. That's on average two hours a day during the month of October of sunshine. The sunniest once again here in the west, Tyree, topping the table with over 100. 130 hours, four and a half hours on average each day. Now there's that deep area of low pressure. The centre of that low pressure, I think, dropping down to about 964 millibars for a time as it drifts eastward, still packing in lots of showers, especially across western parts, where at times there will still be thundery, possibility of some hail in places and wintry up over the higher ground. There's a possibility the winds will pick up for a time during this evening, more so down around southwestern parts of Argyll, through the likes of Inverclyde, Renfrewshire, Glasgow and also parts of Ayrshire. And that will be driving those showers further east through the course of the night. The showers still continue into tomorrow. A lot of cloud to start the day, so we've got these showery outbreaks of rain still with us. However, during the day, the showers should tend to ease off and then brighter weather will extend its way down from the north. So by the afternoon, many parts should end on a dry and fine note. Bye-bye. Make the most of the weather with Scottish Power. A look ahead to this evening's Scotland Tonight. Here's Rona with the details. We speak to MSP Margaret MacDonald as she renews her bid to legalise assisted suicide. Scotland football boss Craig Levine, will he stay or will he go? And it's changed the face of prostate cancer fundraising. Will you be growing a moustache in November? That's Scotland Tonight at 10.30.
And finally, a singer from Edinburgh will be mixing with the stars this weekend, having been nominated for a prestigious MOBO Award. 28-year-old former Napier University student El Mafrix is up for Best Gospel Act at the Star Studded event in Liverpool. Kirsty Malcolm reports. It's a mile away from his day job working for the Inland Revenue. For the past few years, El Mafrex has been studying and touring Scotland, trying to make it big. He grew up singing at his local church in Nigeria, and with the awards just days away, he can't contain his excitement. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, last year I was sitting in my living room and I watched the awards, and a year later, here am I, on the 3rd of November, I'll be sitting mixing with the stars Jay-Z, Kanye West, Rihanna, Beyonce, JCJ, Rita Ora, you know, the list go, goes on and on, you know, like, it's, it's just amazing. The awards celebrate all urban music from hip-hop to soul, and when the event was held here in Scotland last year, it attracted celebs like Katie B, Jesse J and JLS. The MOBOs can be a huge boost for up-and-coming talent. Emily Sanding, who went to Glasgow University, was nominated for Best Newcomer last year. She's now been nominated for five awards and has one of the fastest-selling albums in the UK this year. Mavericks' song Jehovah, which features Christian rock band Royal Foundlings, has had over half a million views on YouTube. They met him by chance after a concert and knew instantly he was one to watch. It kind of sung the song Jehovah and right there in the garden in front of folk and I thought this guy is cool, you know, he's got something. His producers are hoping his unique sound will make him stand out. Mafrex is pulling in all these different um, influences from, you know, from Africa, from his heritage, but um, from Scotland, you know, from rock music, um, loads of different elements. The event takes place this Saturday and with the winners being chosen by the public, Mafrex is hoping this could be the start to a whole new career. Christy Malcolm, STV News. We'll be updating our news and sports stories on our website and by Twitter. There's a late news in Scotland tonight. And of course, we'll be back the same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Good night. To watch all your STV news on the move, keep up to date with our dedicated STV player app for iPhone and Android.